Hey, welcome back. We're glad you're here. This week, we are going to talk more about infrared resolution and how an infrared temp gun, an infrared camera, and an infrared thermometer are different. So if you remember last week, we talked about some infrared images and showed the difference of the resolution and the impact that that makes. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about infrared temp guns and how we determine our spot size ratio of our infrared camera. So if you have an infrared temp gun like this Raytech or any other infrared temp gun that has a little trigger, you shoot and it points a little red laser dot on our wall. Many people think that that little red laser dot is the area that they are reading. But if we look really closely at this image, we can see that on it there is a scale which shows our camera, it shows how far we can be away and how big of an area that we're reading. So for example on this one, when we are six inches away, we read a one inch circle. When we get to be 36 inches away, we read a three inch circle. And when we are 60 inches away, we read a 5.3 inch circle, which is pretty good size, probably about like that. So we do not read the area that it shows within the laser with our temp gun. Now, if we take this FLIR TG165, this has been used quite a bit, but down here in the bottom it gives us a 1 to 24 ratio. So the image in this camera, when we look at the image that this camera gives us, it gives us the ability to see a 1 inch target and accurately read that temperature from 24 inches away. So if we notice with this infrared camera, when we pull the trigger, it gives us laser dots and it shows us the area that we are reading. Between the two laser dots is the area that we are actually getting our temperature reading of. So that's a helpful way that this product gives us the ability to read temperatures. Now, when we go to our bigger infrared cameras, there's another way for us to be able to use and figure out what is considered our spot size ratio. Now, there is a website called FLIR.CUSTHELP.COM. Put that in the description below. And we would go to the FLIR.CUSTHELP.COM page we can go to our downloads area and we can download data sheets and field of view calculators. When we go to this website, we can go down here to the FLIR CX and if you notice our FLIR CX does not have a field of view calculator calculated yet. If we look at our C5, it has a spatial resolution, the IFOV, of 6.1 milliradians. If we go to our EX series and go to the FLIR E5 camera and bring up its specification sheet and see that it has a spatial resolution of 6.9 milliradian. We're 6.3 milliradian with our C5 and 6.9 milliradian with our E5 XT. Now, even though the E5 XT is a different resolution, due to the differences between the lens that's on those cameras, it gives us the, close to the same milliradian. So we can go to that field of view calculator, and we can look here that if we want to have a 1 inch, approximately a 1.3 inch target, we can be approximately 16 feet away. Now, if we take in comparison, the E8, which has a 320 by 240 resolution and a 
2.6 milliradian spatial resolution. And we look at that field of view calculator and we go to approximately a 1 inch, 1.01 inch target size. We can be 32.76 feet away. So that means for a single pixel to pick up temperature of one inch, we can be approximately 32.79 feet away. Now, due to the fact of the way that infrared cameras and the calculations that go into how the resolution works, we have to divide the distance by three. So in order to get an accurate temperature reading, our camera will pick up not a one inch, but a three by three pixel area. So if we were 32 feet away with our E8 camera, we would be reading a three inch target. So if we take that in comparison to here, a three inch target is 36 inches away. Our E8 camera for that same target size that's three feet away, 36 inches, is 32 feet or 384 inches away. If we go to our E5 or our C5, we can see that for a one inch target, we can be 16.39, which is 196 inches for that same three inch size target. Now, if we want to be able to see a one inch size target, we have to move three times closer or we have to move down to 65 inches in order to read a one inch target with a C5 infrared camera. So where that comes into play is, for example, if we are looking at something electrical, this is with our TG165, and we're looking at a breaker, we can see that if I were to put the spot over it, we probably could see the whole hotspot area of our camera. Now, if you notice, one thing that FLIR does with their cameras is they have a crosshair in the middle of their image and they have a square. So if you fill that whole entire square, you will get an accurate temperature reading. If you cannot fill that whole square, your image will be diluted with another pixel. So there it's showing that that is approximately a three by three square pixel. So what that means is how do you know where the best place to use your infrared camera is and on what types of applications. So you have to understand that instantaneous field of view or your spatial resolution so that then you can determine if I use a C5 infrared camera, am I gonna be able to look at electrical components of a small wire that is in an electrical cab? More than likely, we won't be able to use that type of camera for that type of application, but we could use that type of camera for an application such as this where it's a mechanical and we're looking at tanks to see how high the tank is filled. Or if we're looking at, for example, a house to get the general understanding of where we have leaks and how we can fix those leaks. This, for example, is a TG165 image of a door and you can see where the door is leaking at the bottom and that there's a leak all the way around the outside of the door as well. So we can use these cameras quite well for different applications as long as we understand our resolution and the benefits of which resolution we need for which applications. So thank you so much for joining us again. You can let us know what you think about this. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. If you like what you found and you got some value out of this, why don't you like, why don't you subscribe, and join us on this adventure. You can also visit our website in the description below. And if you have any other questions, let us know and we'll be here to help you. So till next time, thanks for joining us and have an utterly awesome day.